What up my freaks, Renaissance Sight here with part 15 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Elspeth von Draken Immortal Empires campaign. So as you saw last time, Deconstructor Zintler led the Fire Army to its fiery debut, defeating Bilicor's stack and by the looks of it, it looks like Kinquata and, well, I guess all of Albion uh, should be ours very shortly. Of course, that army will still have plenty to do as we've got uh, Dark Elves to burn. Up north, we have forced them into a war with the Kislevites, specifically the ice scored Kislevites, and we are hitting them from several sides, but we still need to uh, deal with them. They have a lot of armies on the field and a decent amount of territory, and, uh, well, it'll be a nice trial by fire, continued trial by fire um, for the fire army. Uh, in addition to that, I believe that uh, with the defeat of at least one of the lords of uh, Scarborough, faction he'll probably only have one or two armies remaining once we're effectively done with the badlands which seems to be pretty soon we'll leave cleaning up scarbrand to uh, uh to karaza karak but doesn't need to be here and i'm still hankering for a retrofit of her army i kind of want these silver bullets gone i mean they they look so so darn inferior compared to the uh, uh well even the regular null and iron sides who hit considerably harder than them Granted, they have less units, uh, but even accounting for that, have less units, almost the same range, more than double the armor, and can fight in melee. And that's without even looking at the Amethyst Ironsides, who have the one major advantage of the uh, magical damage taken away from the Silver Bullets. Plus, we want to send the Royal Altar of Griffites and the Knights of the Black Rose and Bruckner into their own army as Elspeth, let's face it, doesn't really need them. Anyway, uh, let's uh, begin, shall we? Or actually, before we do, looks like we did just barely I reach the engagement threshold this time so once again hour long episode and the offer still stands 250 likes and 40 comments and the next episode will be an hour long as well also Baldrick, well we have you sir I believe the suggestion was a land admiral does it need to be dashed or does it not need to be dashed? Does it matter? It probably doesn't. Lad Admiral. Land, uh, Lad Admiral. Land Admiral Zintler. There we go. And he and Deconstructor Zintler can have a nice little sort of friendly rivalry. Anyway, you're going to head to the Citadel of Lead. I don't imagine we need to actually fight it because it's full of garbage. Eh, single unit Marauder champions. But yeah, decisive victory. Look. Oh! Okay, we do need to fight it. Ah, the auto resolve. Damn. It's doing that thing again, where certain units are really, really hated by it. And I, I just have to wonder why it's the, uh, it's the war wagons, the regular war wagons. I imagine it's because they have a 75 speed, which makes them faster than anything else in the army. Hmm. Alright, we'll fight it, why not? Uh, it's not like I'm tired of seeing this army do its thing. Go. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, just to make this battle a teensy bit different from what the land ships usually do, well, the land ships and the steam tanks, uh, we're not going to send them immediately forth to attack the enemy. We're going to use them as artillery here and allow the enemy to close the distance with us instead of sort of disrupting their formation and running amok within their lines. That said, that doesn't mean that the war wagons don't get to work, especially since the auto resolve is so intent on screwing them over and they'll start off on Rivnaparte unit of uh, Marauder Horsemen. I will grant this is a little bit wasteful as there is too much overkill damage happening here, uh, but and they're much better off uh, sniping single targets or at least uh, monstrous infantry or something that doesn't have a lot of units, but that's all right. We will uh, uh, we'll get them to the main line eventually. Uh, speaking of getting to the main line, the Marauder Chieftain is having a tough time doing so down to about less than half HP at 30% and continuously taking cannon shots to the face and now and also the rifles from atop the land ships. All right, 
A nice position, and it looks like the enemy lord will charge our steam tank, or at least one of them, but will turn and run before he gets there. Now that said, the um, skin wolf Wirkin will get through and will attack one of the steam tanks, and that'll be the signal for our land ships to start on in. They are so darn quick and they, uh, when they activate that full power thing, and now they're going to start causing that havoc. Not that they weren't while the enemy was advancing, mind you. And the steam tanks have... Oh, wow, these two smash into each other. Uh, steam tanks are going to sit still uh, for a little bit of a while, just letting the enemies build up before using that steam expulsion uh, to damage them and then riding out with more power. Now, this is already an insane amount of damage, and it looks like it's already too much damage for this poor little enemy army. Auto resolve. I don't know what the heck you were talking about, but this battle is already ours. Man, when we have thunder barges in this army, it's just going to be obnoxious. And funnily enough, that'll make... Huh. <laughs> I just realized. It'll make the Land Admiral, Land and Sky Admiral, basically an Admiral of everything but sea, which is also fantastic. Anyway, uh, we don't need to chase because it's a settlement battle and all of Albion is ours. Alright, there we go, no problem whatsoever. Land ships and steam tanks did about on par with each other in terms of damage, and yeah, obviously not a necessary battle other than the fact that the auto resolve wanted to kill our poor war wagons, uh, but I'm not gonna grow tired of this army anytime soon, so that Someone was worth it. Anyway, so it all let us hours, we don't... Yeah, we don't need the stables here. We do need more defenses. This entire place has to be defended, as, who knows, uh, Dark Elves or whoever is liable to come this way. Van Heimling's destroyed and Belacor has no territory. Oh, I lied. Huh, he actually managed to take a, uh, a, a Chaos Fortress, a Dark Fortress, whatever, up here somewhere, meaning he might move to try to reclaim Conquata. I actually thought he wouldn't be able to revive off the back of that. Huh, interesting. Alright, well, it looks like we'll have to send somebody to hunt him down. Carl, you are moving forward, and by the looks of it, you won't be able to reach Grami this turn. Now let's pop you into ambush stance right here. As we move forward, and we should be able to hit the massive four cal. And next turn, assuming that Orion will lose, and I'm pretty sure he will. They have way, way too many units. Uh, Carl, you have your items, you have your potion of healing. Guess we could level up your little minions here, and just briefly. Uh, definitely replenish troops and definitely safeguard. And then, Mr. Captain. You can have hold the line. Blade Master, we do want to get all of this stuff, which is at rank 10, meaning we need to save three points. And uh, then we just need to hold two points, so hard to hit in Deadly Blade and then hold the rest for this line. Not entirely sure you'll be able to apply that Guardian trait to Carl because he'll be flying around on Deathclaw, but uh, uh, you probably would be able to apply it to the Warrior Priest. So there's that. Speaking of Warrior Priests, we're currently constructing our... Uh, our flagellant army, and I'd love your guys' input on what exactly we can do to make it stronger. So the idea here is, obviously, the flagellants have a lot of weaknesses. They have no armor, and they have no melee defense, uh, but they do have unbreakable, and the activation of the strength of the penitent, which gives them physical resistance and melee defense when they're losing, which, let's face it, they are a lot. Now, to counteract this, what we want to do is either buff up their armor, or melee defense, or debuff enemies melee attack and uh, the way that we are going to start doing this at least as far as I thought well first of all we got the arch lector to buff up their uh, uh, weapon strength via righteous fury and whatever shields we can give them for the uh, damage resistance we'll get another warrior priest and possibly a second one in here for further shields of faith and we'll definitely need the replenished troops on them as well then we have the gold wizard among them or which will be put into their army a to give the tempered aura buff which is an armor buff giving them another 15 percent or 15 rather armor and the possibility to constantly spam glittering robe giving them 60 armor for all allies in range and this thing has 100 percent uptime meaning we can keep it up and running at all times as long as we have the mana in case we're not able to do so we also have the uh, 
Uh, the Amber Wizard with Vissen's Wild Form, which gives a lower amount of armor but additional weapon strength and damage, or Pan's Impenetrable Pelt to give them melee defense and physical resistances. Plus, I like putting Amber Wizards specifically with the uh, with the Flagellants, as they have the unique Imperial Griffin mount among the Wizards and are a little bit more fighty than the other Wizards are, which uh, feels appropriate for a frenzied damage dealers. Then... After all that, we'll get a single Empire. Well, actually, we'll probably get two Empire Captains. I like the Guardian trait, uh, which will help our heroes survive, but the Admired Infantryman will give us melee with attack, which we don't really care about, but the melee defense plus three as well. So it's another plus six melee defense, which ain't horrible. It's not a lot, but it's uh, at least it's something. Lastly, we are currently building a couple of Zhang, Zhang War Drums. Which I don't remember why I was. Oh, right. Uh, I'm building them because one of the auras that they give, on top of also being unbreakable, one of the auras that they give is a plus 24 armor. On top of the uh, on top of the armor trait from the yes. gold wizards, that's 39 armor in an area, and buffing the flagellants up fairly decently, uh, up around the state troop level or possibly above them, depending on which state troops and which buffs they have. It's not bad, but we could do more. So if anybody has any ideas as to what other units that have auras, because these guys clearly need supportive elements, and that we could pop into this army. Let me know. I was thinking about getting them Zotes or possibly Sisters of the Thorns simply both because they both have bound abilities like the Shield of Thorns, Melee Damage reflex, Reflection rather, and the Curse of Anra here, uh, which reduces enemies' melee attack, or the Zotes which could do the Flesh to Stone or Earth Blood to Heal. Neither of them, however, do any kind of aura buffs to these units, so they would be helpful in sort of an active aura way in the form of spells, but there's possibility or potential for them. Plus the Sisters of the Thorn do apply their, uh, and do apply their poison, but there was also potential of putting those in another army, so I'll have to think about that. Is there any other aura thing that would help us? Maybe if we were to make contact with the uh, Lizardmen, we could potentially get, uh, Mm, get either Arcs of Sotek or possibly Revivification Crystals to help out with the matter. Hmm. And that's all I can think of for now. I don't believe dwarves have anything aura-wise that would help this army. But anyway, uh, we gotta get, uh, we gotta get moving. Now, Andreas Meyer, you were supposed to recruit cavalry forces. I don't remember how many of the Knights of the Black Rose we need. And you have an Empire Captain, but this one is specifically, I believe, going to join... Or was going to join Bruckner. On the other hand, I mean, these guys need another captain as well, don't they? We have one here who has determined. We could give him a cunning one. Why not? You can join this army as well. And I can pop this guy into the other army. Uh, Andreas, I guess for now you can travel. Oh, right, you have the Hawkland Scopes. That was going to make you the leader of a sort of... Uh, of uh, the slow the enemies down army. See if we can't get their speed down to basically zero. I don't want to summon another lord just to transfer these, though. We could get them to come back in a couple turns. I mean, Carl won't be gone for long. It's fine. All right, that's what we'll do. And I'm also not sure where to put these guys. Accusation, unfortunately, doesn't reduce speed, but it might work in that particular army. I was originally popping them into the flagellant army, but not going to work out. Mostly because we already have too many heroes in that army, because we need them to buff them up. Anyway, the rest of you stick around here while that army continues recruiting. And I believe we're good to go to end the turn. Schematics still available, but frankly, all we can do right now is upgrade a bunch of units and... Ah, oh, damn, the upgrades are ludicrously expensive. Considering how few of the units we have, it might not be worth it. We'll just keep saving them up for a little bit until I figure out what I want to do with them, or until we start popping some units in. Uh, the reason I'm waiting is because we want more of the Amethyst units in Elspeth's army, and actually, wait. Thinking of Elspeth's army, we may want the Amethyst armorer plus three Amethyst unit capacity for, the, for her own army up and running by the time she returns to her own territory, or we could just get it close to, because we can summon them anywhere, right? Hmm, yeah. Anyway, uh, that was my thoughts on the matter. And I believe, unless there is... Oh, we could do a little bit of uh, friendliness with the uh, Heralds of Ariel. Go for it, non-aggression. 
Oh, they're probably going to die by the time we uh, move in to help them out, but, uh, well, what can you do? Uh, Argulon wants military alliance, that's not gonna happen, but Castelton has survived this long. He does not have a capital, though, does he? He has Castle Alexandrinov and Zoyshank, meaning he can't actually build any units that are of use to us, can he? Oh, actually, he can build Frostworms out of the Animal Den, which is a Tier 3 structure? Huh. For some reason, I thought that the Frostworms would be Tier 4, but apparently not. Well, that's not so bad. Hmm. Alright, fine. Give us your money as well. Might as well make some use of it. And actually, while we're in that portion of the tree, let's take a look at our allied missions. We have one from Argulon, but our allegiance is 100, but we may as well take a, uh, take a mission here. Grom the punch. There we go. What we could do is we could preemptively recruit the Sisters of the Thorn. We don't necessarily have to put them in this particular army. I feel like the Zotes kind of work better with the uh, with the flagellants, especially as the poison arrows would be a danger to our own units as well. Anyway, Argolon, we'll take the couple of Sisters of the Thorn for now. Though the Zotes are more expensive and we'd be able to... Hmm... The fact that they're more expensive, meaning they would be... Like we need to replace more allegiance, which is a good thing in this particular case. You know, in fact, I'm gonna go with the Zotes for now. And I'll think about what to do with the rest. Anyway, I suppose the dampen effect on them might not be a bad thing, because of the additional physical resistance on the flood flagellants will mean that they will... Uh, mm, that the physical resistance will not be bypassed by magical attacks due to the dampen effect. Which ain't that bad. Potentially. Anyway, uh, you, sir, I don't believe we're gonna have any other Imperial troops in this army. Just to double check, land ships don't give us any kind of auras, do they? And do any of the regiments of renown give any kind of auras? That could buff them up. Grendel's defenders do, but they're for uh, war machines, or actually they're for artillery, but, oh, artillery or war machines. Huh. Actually, we might still make use of that. Black lions don't have any auras, and neither do the white wolves. And I don't think the Electric Count State Troops do either, at least not that I'm recalling. Oh, we could give them some Knights of the Everlasting Light Cavalry if we wanted to. They have the Blinding Radiance melee attack reduction trait. This might be a decent place to put them, actually. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. And it kind of works with the whole Faith Army. Now let's do Speed of Horse as well, then. Uh, just a couple of them will uh, round out the area, and between the minus 8 melee attack on the Knights of the Everlasting Light, combined with the minus 5 melee attack on any glittering scales we have, that's a considerable reduction in melee attack for an enemy. Alright, now I believe we are not good to go because we just got money, and thus we need to spend a little bit more, as this is the very last turn of the materials at sea. Uh, we have spent most of our cash, though. I'm not sure there's anything really useful left anymore. At least in most of our territories. Uh, you could do a warrior priest capacity. What's our current warrior priest capacity at? I can't even see here. Our battle wizard capacity is low, and we do still want to get one of every type of wizard in one army, at least. Engineer capacities will always be fine. Captains are three out of eight. We're probably going to not need that many captains, and frankly... Yeah, I could probably use a few more warrior priests. All right, we could build another warrior priest thingy. Nagenhof, go for the Shrine of Sigmar. At 800 and whatever that cost, it's not really worth considering. Uh, in terms of its cost, Needling and Flensburg... We'll do two more of these. And yeah, I know, it might be better off to just build the uh, defenses in case, like, a rogue army appears in the middle of our territory, or beastmen appear in the middle of our territory, but, eh, for now. I can always delete them later if we should desire it. Uh, do we want to upgrade one of these? Coaching in? Fine, go for it. You're not at max. Not that it really does anything for us anyway, but, uh, why not? There we go. All money spent, and all our moves spent. My energy spent. Let's end the turn and let's proceed. Uh, hopefully Thorgrim can grab a Crindon Bitterstone Mine without our interference, as I'd prefer not to have Elspeth need to go all the way up there. We also need to transfer them these new territories before said territories rebel. Orion wants military access? Sure, Orion, go for it. No defensive alliance, huh? Eh, whatever. It's fine. Keep it friendly. And we're looking good. Alright, Gourmand Nitrot destroyed, meaning we won't have to solve their problems up there. Huntsman General, diplomatic relations with Middenland. If we raise or sack belonging 
Why is this issue? Why does this mission get issued when the enemies have when the when the faction has no enemies? This this quest is literally impossible to do. Like <laughs> like you can't do it because they have no enemies, and we can't even get them into a war because we're not in an alliance with them. Hmm. Ooh, Marienburg is so, so close to uh, confederating, though. That'd be real nice. I really want Marienburg for us. Uh, Zufbar. We will want to upgrade your outpost. Wait, wait, wait. Let me just see here. Masters of Innovation, Kuhan, Karakadrin. Oh, yes. We do need to upgrade you. They are well on the way to... Let me see Karakadrin itself. I'm up to tier 5. Only a matter of time until the gyrocopters or gyro bomb. No, land ships. No, uh, thunder barges <laughs> are up and running. Damn, uh, my brain. It not work so good. Uh, I guess we're gonna briefly head down to Sunken Kernark. I was gonna go to Granty Mingol next, but who knows? We could meet Scarby like right here or something. Scarby, you around, buddy? I love you. Uh, to resolve and occupy. Oh, sack. And that'll pay for those outposts. Free Razor Standard, sure, and... Wait, 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 what? That... Okay, now I look like an idiot, because apparently that quest counted, even though they are not a tour with Scarbrand. Huh. A moment, uh, just out of curiosity. They're not at war with Scarbrand, so why did that complete? I guess it counts enemies that are, like, faction enemies, rather than... You know what I mean? Like, loreful enemies, not, like, enemies' enemies, like, game enemies. Um, am I making sense here? <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, Grami. Carl's been waiting for you to get his debut. Obviously, this is not the final form of his army. This isn't even his final form, is what I should have said. Uh, but uh, hopefully it'll be good enough to defeat you. What do we have that'll be an issue for us? Grami himself is difficult to bring down. The Rogue Idol and Arachnarok are always issues. And we don't know what's in the stack. Now, or in the WA. Now, the question is, will he bring out the reinforcements from the Massive Four Cal? And it doesn't look like it, but that's fine. All right, Pyrrhic victory. He's certainly willing to fight this. We got a couple of river trolls, but no additional Arachnoroks in the uh, WA. Uh, we'll put the steel standard on Carl himself, giving him additional speed and bringing him up to 108. He needs to cross the battlefield fairly quickly to start killing off those Arachnoroks and that rogue idol, or at least start bonking them a little bit. And then plus Grami, and due to his HP pool being lower, it might be better to go after him. He's unbreakable and regenerative after all, and Carl should be hopefully able to outdamage him. Uh, Razor Standard goes on, I guess, one of the central units of great swords. And away we go. Alrighty, here we go. Carl Franz debuts at last, and the great swords look pretty, well, great uh, in the unknown colors. I mean, admittedly, they're rather similar to uh, Reichland colors, but a little bit darker and a little bit more uh, menacing, I guess. Anyway, Carl will head directly to the enemy army alone on Deathclaw, flying over the forest and his own uh, men and to get towards Grom the Paunch, who he will want to try to knock down. We're going to position our cavalry on two sides, or at the very least our Reichsguard on two sides, to try to knock out the enemy pump wagons and boar boys alike, as the uh, Reichsguard have a lot of that anti-large bonus that they can rely upon, less perhaps than the, uh, uh, less perhaps than the, huh. I wonder, does the anti-large bonus given from Carl override an anti-infantry bonus? Because I see... Right. We have the anti-infantry label on the Reichsguard, right? But they don't have any anti-infantry bonuses, curiously enough. Maybe it's just the uh, maybe it's just the label without the bonus. I hope that uh, Carl's buff doesn't override it. Either way, they have anti-large and boar boys and pump wagons alike should be an easy target for them. Grom the Paunch, somewhere in here. And there he is. Carl will touch down and try to chase him down while the great swords try to move into the center and distract the enemy with the help of the... Uh, 
uh, the demigriffs, which are staying together with the melee, rather than moving out with the Reichsguard, which can more or less take care of themselves, at least against enemy, uh, the enemy's own cav and stuff. Probably not so the Black Orcs, but we'll deal with them as we get to it. Anyway, Carl has found Garami, and they're going to start fighting a little bit. We've also got the first of our cav units moving in, and an Orc boys unit, Boar boys unit rather, will be the first target here. But it won't be by this unit of knights, rather it'll be the unit moving to flank the enemy. The enemy's facing directly here, so we'll hit him in the flank instead, as they thought that this other unit was going to get him. And then we'll hit them from two sides. More unit of Rice Guard charge through the wooded territory, or through the woods, uh, sort of doing a little bit of a drive-by, ride-by, uh, hitting a few of the ranged gobos, and then getting the heck out of there rather than staying and fighting both Grom and River Trolls and the big boys out there as well. And the great swords are moving in. It looks like it's time for the rest of our cav to uh, seek their targets. More boar boys and wagons over on this side. Now, this unit of great swords is probably in a very dangerous position as stone trolls are and river trolls are going to hit them from two sides, and black orcs are moving in to reinforce. So they're going to get a little bit overrun. Out here, though, we have more Reichsguard moving in. Pump wagons are going to be met by those anti large units, and the Reichsguard smash into those boar boys as well. Boar Boy Biggins, specifically, who immediately upon charging are going to attempt to run. That said, the units that uh, peeled away from Carl are going to hit these guys in the back, smashing a unit of Orc uh, or Gobbo Archers and a unit of Boar Boys uh, between units of Reichsguard, and quickly obliterating them. Very nice. Uh, the left flank, or at the very least the cavalry portion of it, is one, but we're having a little bit of more of a tough time where our great swords are attempting to hold. Great swords versus black orcs is a pretty terrible matchup uh, for the great swords, and they will get ripped apart if we let them. Carl has dropped Mr. Garami down to about a third of his HP with Galmaraz, and it looks like on the right flank the Reichsguard have also obliterated that unit of boar boys. All right. And the duel here continues. We're also trying to use our uh, demigriffs to catch any large units, and we're going to send this particular unit off to help catch Grom the Ponch. It's just gotten a little bit annoying with him constantly trying to run away from Carl, and it's better to pin him in place with the demigriffs. Oh, nice! Knocking out a demigriff with a sim single blow. Pretty impressive, Grom, eh? And I suppose that's a reason to maybe not keep him here. He uses his own Wa ability as well, which uh, gives a healing, which is not so great for us, at least against the uh, trolls and the larger unit. Uh, the rogue idol has joined the fray, and that's even more uh, issue for the poor great swords. That we've backed them up a little bit with the spare units of Reichsguard charging into the back lines of enemy orcs. More Reichsguard sort of running through the middle of the enemy army. Just got to make sure that all the enemy uh, range units are. Just destroyed before we move in to help. The great swords are taking heavy damage, but are still managing to pin the enemy in place. And we got to use their sacrifice, after all. Demigriffs still trying to work on trolls here, but uh, looks like the trolls are running and the demigriffs are getting a few extra shots into the uh, enemy infantry. Grom still remains unbreakable, but at about a thousand HP and a few more hits, we'll have Carl bring him down. Alright, come on, Carl. And down goes Garami, and we turn to the next target, which by the looks of it is a river troll hag uh, for Carl to kill, and then on to this Arachnorok spider, which by the looks of it has killed 21 Reichsguard so far. And that number just... Yep, 23 now. Well, it looks like it kills two Reichsguard with every hit, and we're going to need to get the Reichsguard out of here before it dishes too much damage. Frankly, I was hoping that Carl would work off uh, all of these monsters and kill them all off, rather. Uh, but alas, he took a little bit too long chasing Grommy around, who didn't want to engage in direct combat. Which does make sense, admittedly, but uh, yeah, that aspect didn't work quite so well for us. Anyway, as we can see, we've taken quite a bit of damage, both to great swords and to uh, Rakesguard alike. A lot of them, in fact, almost all of them, are below half HP. 
In fact, our entire army is at this point, by the looks of it, below half HP. We're going to use the units of Reichsguard that are the most hurt to continue chasing enemies around in the background and make sure that they fl uh, they don't flee the field or that they don't rally, and just so that they're destroyed, while Carl takes on the Rogue Idol, the Black Orcs, and the Arachnarok alike in the very much most dangerous position on the field. Perhaps if Grom had called the Rogue Idol and the Arachnarok to him, together with this unit of Black Orcs, when he was still on the field, Carl would have had a lot more of a tough time bringing him down, and perhaps then Grammy wouldn't have need to run instead of fight. Alright, that's a big old rogue. Idle bonk it in the head with Galmaraz there, Carl, though that's a huge HP pool uh, to uh, slowly work our way through. Great Swords and Reichsguard are like still very much struggling against the Black Orcs here. These ones almost at 100 kills, as well as 8k damage, and these ones at... 48, I believe, yeah. Still doing pretty good. I wish this particular unit wasn't in the dark, though, as it's kind of difficult to see what they're doing, and funnily enough, it's easier to see what's going on in this sort of forested area. And great swords and demigriffs alike still pinning the enemy on the rightmost flank in place, and at the very least, uh, the debuffs to the trolls due to the large turret or the, uh, uh, the trees are helping us out here. Not that they're likely to escape the press of units, as Reichsguard have arrived and hit the enemy in the back, forcing these ones at least to rout. Carl has finally defeated the Arachnarok, with a little bit of help from the uh, uh, the Demigriffs here, and the Reichsguard will give chase while we turn now to the Rogue Idol. Rogue Idol is debilitated and in pretty bad shape. We just gotta work through the rest of the units here. Another Awakening of the Wood, I believe, should be coming down, or I might have missed it. Or maybe I used it somewhere else, I'm not sure. It's the only spell we have right now since we don't have levels on any of our heroes. But they should most definitely level up from this as it's been a heck of a fight. 72 kills on that rogue idol as well. Very nice, and it looks like our great swords have had to peel away. This one's basically destroyed uh, from the Black Orcs. We're going to get a charge into their rear from the uh, Demigriffs, hoping the Morale Shock will break them. And it looks like it will. With them, the Morale Shock causes the Rogue Idol to begin to crumble. And it will fall apart just as the Black Orcs flee the field. And there we go. Carl lifts off, and with that, the battle is ours. Ooh, this Reichsguard unit down to eight units. Uh, this great sword unit down to six. Uh, massive amounts of damage on pretty much all of our army. Although, yeah, the great swords really could have used a little bit more support to hold the line there. How much? Well, they got to 122 armor. I was wondering whether we should be uh, giving them a, a Cathay and War Drum, perhaps, to give them more armor, but they have enough armor to be getting on with themselves uh, just fine. And they just need the stats from various upgrades to become stronger. Anyway, we're gonna give chase to every single thing here as we still have the garrison and the little army outside the settlement to fight, and we'll have to fight them while very, very heavily damaged. Ooh, all right, a very nice fight for Carl's debut battle here. We even lost one of our units of greatswords, which bravely stood not quite until the last man. They were down to six units at the end there, uh, but it looks like that's not enough to keep the uh, uh, to keep the unit functioning. Still, they dealt 12, nearly 13k, well, 12k damage, and beat all but one of the other great swords and were quite great. Uh, go figure. Uh, Reichsguard did plenty of damage, one of them going all the way up to 24k, and by the looks of it, the best Reichsguard and even some of the middling Reichsguard were either on par or uh, uh, same ish in terms of damage as compared to the Demigriffs, which is quite impressive as well. Though, of course, Carl does buff them quite a bit, and they are more fragile than the Demigriffs are. Now, we will need to heal up as that is not all the the broken axe, and we need to fight again, presumably immediately after. Of course, this army is a lot weaker currently due to the low levels on a lot of things. Hey, ally mission successful. And Diplo with high elves, sure, great. 
the mage. All right, that put him up to tier five or level five, which gives him at least access now to life bloom and earth blood, which we didn't have in that battle, and uh, which we certainly very much wanted and needed. Uh, you. Carl, you have all your unique traits, I believe. Let's get you Deadly Onslaught for a little bit of extra damage. It's not like you have anything that's high enough level to uh, warrant any of this. And we will want Mentor for you as well, though your level is decently high. Hammer of Sigmar, no Shield of Faith available yet, so keep on replenished troops and impassion for Mr. Gunter Scharfner. I don't like any of these guys' traits, but I got them in here so that Carl could have some units in the army. And then we'll go for sparring pr Oh, did I accidentally spend all your points as well? Should have saved them for Guardian at least. And possibly killing blow, but oh well. Oh well, you will deal with that. Now, let's continue a little bit of admin before we move on forward and... Land Admiral Zintler. Hmm. Hey, what's the best way to do this? We need these armies to meet up, don't we? Also, we want you to be constructed home stones. And I guess we're going to want fields here. We, The faster we get these towns up to tier 2, the faster we'll hopefully be able to build the... Uh, uh, build the tier 3 defenses, and then hopefully these places will survive. Marienburg's still kicking around. I also just wanted to double check. It's minus 9 now. I guess by defeating the broke oh right, they're at war with the Broken Axe, so by virtue of the Broken Axe seeming weaker, and these guys seem stronger. Oh well, what can you do? Pioneer of progress. Deconstructor Zintler, you don't technically need to move to Conquata, however, wait. So you're looking for Sutson's guns in the Stir River Patrol, we currently have... We can't check it by the... oh actually we can. Uh, six more turns until the Stir River Patrol, and two more turns until the Sutson's guns. Alright, meaning you don't have to be ashore right now, but you will be over the next uh, couple of turns. Hmm. And I believe we can't get that in allied territory, meaning you can stick around here. Alright, fine. Land Admiral Zintler, briefly go on and kill off Mr. Anarath Dowie Breaker. And auto resolve this garbage, hopefully it won't kill our war wagons. It did not. Lovely. And I guess money is the only thing that we can take here. This does put you out to sea, and you can quickly grab this uh, mysterious island. You can quickly grab this missile. Thank you. And let's grab you. Hmm. This will most likely give movement range decent likelihood. Let's get aggression. What will this give you? Uh, the bloody red spot gives you frenzy. Some frenzy for the land ships. Uh, uh, all right, sure. Why not? Why not? And a free Dawnstone. I was hoping for the curse of cannibalism because regeneration on land ships would just be silly. Uh, but it's all right. That's why we have the uh, the Jade Wizard there. Anyway, you two have to meet up. We have to transfer the Emperor's Wrath to Land Admiral Zintler and get those crossbows as well. How are we for flame can? Oh, that's what we can do. Deconstructor Zintler can land at Conquata, because it's green, and recruit his missing units in addition to hopefully recruit flame cannons from our dwarfen friends. That makes sense to me. Alright, what's up next? Evan Pfeiffer. I see this army still running from you, and Malice is moving in. Well, ain't that cute. Wonder whether they'd both attack us if we were to... Uh, if we were to essentially go here. They very well could. And Malice being one of the toughest lords to kill. It would be a pretty good fight for uh, Gautric and Felix and Ulrika. Exciting times. Although his army is a little bit lackluster. Oh, this is the army he starts with. He never lost his first stag because he starts with the Bloodrag, Medusa, and Scourge Runners, and probably Cold One Nights. I don't remember about that, but uh, eh, good job, Malice. Anyway, let's level you up in case the attack is a coming. And I do imagine with two stacks, they'd be a little bit more likely to try it. Uh, Imperial Gunnery. Probably should do Imperial Gunnery, right? We do have a couple of cannons in here, as well as the... Oh, wait, the Mortars are from the Mighty Forge. Uh, you have a lot of points that need to be spread around, but fortunately you have plenty of points available. So, yeah, go for Imperial Gunnery, max it out. Ew, Felix. I guess since we have all of your unique stuff, we just keep trying to go to Deadly Onslaught. Let's get you Scarred Veteran. Why Scarred Veteran? Because of the Blood Oath, they get more advantage from it. 
or more value out of it. And you're trying to get to Deadly Onslaught as well, and you can get Scarred Veteran as well. Next up, Ulrika. Well, we could certainly use a Penumbral Pendulum going through the uh, middle of the enemy uh, line during a battle against two stacks. And Andreas Ludenhauer, our new engineer, said missing the old one, but all right. We'll get increased mobility, and then we'll hold up to the rest of the points as we'll want to go in through all the way to Machinist Preparations. And, wait, somebody else? Oh, yeah, I read that's you. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Where are you going? You're trying to go after Admiral Leech. Why don't you grab the monolith of Katam? Oh, in fact... Okay, wait. Another issue. Uh... Okay, wait. Wait, let's just... We gotta figure this out. We want Zargard or... Hmm... Ice Guard from the Master Builder, Discipline, and Knowledge Blade. I don't like any of those. Fleet Footed, meh. Witch Hunters we don't care about. Let's check Warrior Priests. We need a second Warrior Priest here, don't we? I see two Captains. I see one Warrior Priest. Yeah, two Warrior Priests. Uh, we have Strong. Yeah, go for Strong. More armor. All right. Then we'll pop the Wizards in here. Wizard 1. Wizard 2. And then both Captains. Get training! Like so, and like so, which gives us room for two more things, which will be the additional warrior priest, and the army will be complete, at least assuming that we keep the zotes in here, and nobody can give me a better idea as to what kind of unit we could have with auras. Two of the flagell flagellants will eventually be replaced by Knights of the Everlasting Light as well, though... Actually running a little bit low on flagellants, but that may not necessarily be a bad thing because the auras have a relatively limited range, and the closer the units are to the auras, probably the better. Uh, Andreas Meyer, you're moving to transfer to stuff to Carl and take the Demigriff Knights from him as well, as he won't be keeping those. Work to do. Just to double check, you're still you still don't want to trade Bordelow, do you? Um, Bordelow for Monfa at 15. It's very very close. All right, if we can do this before Bordelow is upgraded to tier three, we might be able to get it from them. And the way to get it from them is to make Monfa worth more. And to make Monfa worth more, we need to get Castle Best Stun. And to get Castle Best Stun, we need to get the Massive Forkal and then trade it to these guys. That's at least um, the way I'm planning it. I don't know if it'll work out, but we'll give it a try. Anyway, let's keep everybody moving. Boris, you are the recruiting guy. You, Carl, will fight again in a few seconds. I'm willing to bet the garrison will be willing to fight, simply because we're so heavily damaged. Uh, Richter Biber. And Adolphus, you're going in a specific kind of army that will be led by one of the new guys, but, uh, wait. We maybe want to start recruiting with them. Uh, Huntsman General. Hmm. Uh, no, we need Hawkland Scopes for the new army because we'll want stuff that slows enemies down. So I guess we could get you on the field. Gotta figure out a reason to actually use the, uh, that's one. Anyway, oh, 1.4k for you. Damn, you're expensive. Uh, what we want you to do is go to Ice Court and start recruiting a few of the uh, Ice Guard because of this is a 99. Halberds versus Swords. I'm gonna say Halberds because, well, hmm. Well, the charge reflection in case the enemies get to this. This is gonna be an all ranged army with uh, lots and lots of slow stuff. We'll need. We'll probably need four of these. Yeah, the thing is, we probably won't be able to get an easy access to f s poison. Yes, the Sisters of the Thorn have it, but with only two units applying frostbite, it feels like it's not enough. As in, not enough units will be struck by it, and thus not enough units will be slowed. Oh well. Uh, we'll figure it out. Gregor Pritzkok. What are you doing? Oh, you're waiting to join the army because Leopold's not in there. Why don't I put him in there now? What the heck are you doing, Ronas? Come on, present Ruinus, you're almost as bad as past Ruinus. I hate that guy. Uh, Emperor Karl Franz is gonna attack in a second. Let's check diplomacy again. Yes, I know, I know. It's pathological, but whatever. Uh, Golden Order. Yes. I'm gonna say point eight. All right, come on. Give it to mine. Eight, eight, eighty-eight. <laughs> the damn it, guilt. Try a little bit harder. Middenland, finally willing to do defensive alliance. Sure, go for it, Middenland. As you say, sir. Now. 
be nice and friendly with the rest of the Empire territories. Uh, Iron Brav's expedition, Camry and Court of Libaras. And Clan Angren, willing to do the non-aggression. I mean, technically we're not allied with any of the Wood Elves, so he could still do the non-aggression with them and not piss them off too much. But without a trade agreement, and Angrand is really unlikely to trade, there isn't much purpose to it. There's also Khemri to consider. Uh, so it seems that the Oracles of Zinch are the other powerful unit or anime. I don't know whether it was Volkmar, whether Volkmar was wiped out by Khemri or them, though, because we saw previously that the Great Desert of Araby was held by Kairos, meaning he could have gone all the way through here, killed all this. These guys aren't at war. But are they friends? We do want to make friends with Raponce or stay friends with Raponce as we do want to access to Bretonian units and only Kuran is too limited. Anyway, I believe that's it. Let's do building, building, then let's move Carl. Alright, we'll focus on the money buildings first and then the other stuff later. As we do... Oh, okay, now we'll, we'll, we, we will upgrade Castle Templehof. Oh, I miss materials at C. 13k for a single upgrade. Okay, I'm gonna wait on that. We don't technically need it, as it doesn't actually give us too much of this. However, it does. Clothier, please. Nordland. Uh, Selzenmund. I must have deleted something here, but I no longer remember what it was. Oh, it was most likely a defensive structure. Okay. Uh, we do want the coaching in, but I think for now we'll just build a, a wizard's conclave. We still need those conclaves all over the place. Middle Mountains, Brass Keep. You can upgrade that Temple of Sigmar, but it doesn't really do anything for us, especially as we're not lacking in capacity. We will, however, build the landed estate here because Ergig can't grow by itself, or at the very least does very slowly. Middenheim, we need you to get to Tier 5 to get to that great Temple of Ulrich, but that's going to take absolute ages. Manfa... We could upgrade these, because that'll make the territory worth more, in theory. Sometimes I've actually seen it bugged where you upgrade stuff and it actually is worth less, which is a little bit odd. So I'm a little bit wary of doing so, since we're tied up in trying to trade Monfort for Bordelot. Hmm. Maybe hold off. Forest of Gloom and Gryffindor, we don't care about you. Frankly, I probably should have just traded them away for something, but too late now. Uh, Galbarez and Stormhenge. How close are you to Rebellion? Eh, not that close. I mean, we could trade them already, but you know, we'll do it later. Uh, Marshes of Madness, you are in the same position. And I don't believe there's anything else here, but we can upgrade to a borrow. Now, these will also be great money-making provinces down here. Port Cell continues to upgrade, and that's it for the building building, leaving us some money, which is good, because we're gonna need it. Yes. Uh, you, you Carl, try attack again. Will, will they fight? Win. Yes, they will. Pyrrhic victory, high casualties, most likely due to the damage on some of our units, some of which we might not even be able to use because they're so heavily hurt, except for to chase. Enemy is down, but uh, this is a lot less of a problem. Yeah. Alrighty, here we go, round two for me and you, but uh, I think this one will go a lot better. And then the last battle, our army may be at half HP, but we've got Earth Blood available now, and we can heal our single entities as we move on in to uh, fight the enemy. And on top of that, the enemy's armies are going to be separated a minute and 30 seconds until their reinforcements arrive. Now, we've deployed this in such a way that our uh, infantry are going to move under the cover of the trees so that the artillery doesn't blow them up and we've separated into two groups of knights here the first group is the group that was in relatively good shape two demigriff knight units leading three reichsguard units forward while the badly hurt units of cav are kept in the back to chase enemies down whilst these guys do the damage and the fighting certainly don't want them uh, to take any more uh, out here carl has landed upon the enemy 
Uh, El Enemy Lord here, losing my voice here, and has done about half of his HP and damage already, and a few more hits should see him off, though the mass is always working against us when we got a tiny little uh, uh, enemy foot lord like this, and Deathclaw just sends him constantly flying. He's trying to cast though, and at the very least it was preventing him from casting for a while, until he managed to get sneaky stabbing on one of the gabos. Reichsguard and Demigriffs are holding back the uh, trolls here, but it looks like the trolls will rout relatively quickly as they are taking damage and this enemy army is in bad shape and trolls have notoriously low leadership. Alright, out here it looks like the York Boar Chariots. Oh, I thought those were pump wagons. The enemy actually brought some boar chariots. That's cute. Uh, they brought them to play for the Reichsguard to obliterate. For, I no longer really see the point of boar chariots now that pump wagons exist, because you could just build pump wagons instead. But anyway, at the very least the spiky, spiky uh, rollers ones. And the trolls are routing, the night gobos are routing, and it looks like the first army has by and large been overrun and destroyed. Well, not quite destroyed yet, in fact we are going to work hard and making sure not a single unit escapes while we get ready to fight the reinforcements stack which is the garrison and thus the more threatening enemies they've got the black orcs and well other stuff i don't remember the composition exactly but they do have black orcs and we already saw how effective they were the last battle Alright, it looks like these guys are nearly good. The great swords are going to move into position to once again hold the tide of enemies back while Carl flits overhead and goes after the enemy trolls here. Why trolls? Just because. <laughs> uh, just because. I suppose he could have gone after the Black Orcs as well, but I feel like he would have taken more damage being surrounded by those great weapons than by the trolls, and he is still damaged here, after all. And there we go, some biggins and some regular orcs, he can certainly mince though while working on those trolls, though by the looks of it they don't really want any part of this and are going to try to back it on out of there. Now we're repositioning our main army and our great swords are ready to fight, we're going to have our relatively unhurt or less hurt, let's say, cav units they hit the enemy in the flanks while the other more hurt units are going to loop around and hit the enemy range and chase off any enemy units that flee the main field of battle. Uh, looks like some black orcs did in fact join the trolls after all, so Carl will be fighting both of them alike, but he has that healing potion and now that we have Earthblood, we're in a lot better position to send him into really dangerous fights like those. Alright, if the units just would not constantly block him from actually getting a hit in, Come on, Carl. Hit somebody. There you go. No, that was just stagger on Deathclaw. All right, well, I'm sure he'll hit somebody eventually. <laughs> Don't worry, we got other units to uh, do the hitting for us. Reichsguard have made it in to help uh, the great swords out. And the Demigriffs as well, and the Tide of Orcs will be stopped here, or at the very least the, uh, uh, the uh, Orcs of uh, the Broken Axe. I suppose Grimgore is still alive uh, down there somewhere. Although it remains to be seen whether he survives against the uh, uh, the Chaos Dwarfs as they have a tendency to fight each other. Anyway, great swords holding and let's make it a little bit their show this time around, especially as all the great swords in this army will eventually be replaced by Karober great swords once we have uh, uh, once we have them on the field, which will hopefully be relatively soon. And plus, since the cavalry stole the show last uh, uh, last battle. Anyway, it looks like the enemy infantry are fleeing from at least some of the great swords here. The bounce power at about 85% now. Uh, Black Orcs, of course, still holding, but the enemy rear line is on the verge of collapse with, once again, only the Black Orcs holding, but surrounded by Reichsguard and Demigriff Knights as well. Now, this would obviously be very dangerous for the Reichsguard here, as uh, the Black Orcs could rip them apart. However... In this particular case, there are so many of them using their mass that they kind of keep the uh, Black Orcs locked in place and thus unable to do really anything. Anyway, 
I do believe that is that. The enemy army will shatter and the battle is ours. Lots and lots of chasing to do once more as we want to ensure that we can take the enemy's settlement as it is. So we're going to do the chasing, but we'll do it off screen. All right, very nice again. Love that classic greatsword in Reichsguard, uh, Karl Franz. I mean, we're going to heal up, though we probably wouldn't need it for the auto resolve. But you know what? It's only 500 money. Why risk it for a mere 500 gold? Imperial Pegasus, enemy killed in battle. We're going to occupy the place at its current level rather than sacking it, even though it would be worth tons, but I'd rather have Erengrad to be on. Or not Erengrad, uh, Bordelow, if we can manage to make this happen. Plus, we're at the end of our movement range, which means if we sacked, we'd have to go again. Oh, I am tempted by it, don't get me wrong. It's 15k. On the other hand, we built most of our stuff. On the other, other hand, we've got more armies on the way, and that one settlement upgrade that was costing us was costing us a lot. And it's not like we're keeping the place. I can't remember, was it tier 5 or tier 4? Hmm. I could loot and occupy it for half. And not waste the turn. Let's loot and occupy it. Alright, it was, oh, it was a tier 5. Lovely. It'll still be worth quite a bit to our, uh, to our friends and, oh, what ancillary did we just get? Uh, not to you. Wait. Is ancillary gained separate? Equipment gained here, equipment gained here. Okay, yes, they are separate. Barber Surgeon, yes. Uh, Carl, do you have a Barber Surgeon? You do not. You have a valet, as the Emperor should, and you don't need to hold a Tradesman, I think. We can give that to somebody else. Uh, where was that Barber Surgeon? Starts with a B, there we go. Oh, actually. Uh, currently, our trade is at 16,800. 16K and 800. If we give you... At least temporarily. 16k and 800. Where was that tradesman or whatever it was called? Plus 8%. 16k and 800. 8% gives us... 294 gold. So 8% tariffs is 294 gold. It's not a lot because it's only tariffs. It's not trade agreement, right? So host Festag gives 5%. So it'll probably, so host Festag would probably give us something like 200 money, meaning Imperial Taxation at tier 5, oh, it's only 5%, uh, still just barely not enough, though in a few provinces like Castle Drakenhof it might actually eventually get to the point where it would be enough to do taxation, although I think, I'm not 100% sure on it, I might be confusing this with the dwarfs, there might be, there might be, a thing here that gives us another 5% to Imperial Taxation. I'm not 100% sure on it, though. Because if there's not, then yeah, we should just do Host Vestag everywhere. And she also probably do Colonial Factors ASAP. I really wanted those Karaberg Greatswords for Carl, but I guess we can hold off on uh, uh, Colonial Factors for a few turns. I mean, this is only going to be, what, like 700 gold? It's not that crazy at the end turn. But anyway. Anyway, some nice fights, folks, but to that, I think, is the end of this episode, or at the very least, we are out of time. And I am going to call it here. Certainly no more battles to be had. Next time, Carl will... Okay, also, you need to leave the territory. Oh! You suffer attrition there, but he will... Ah! <laughs> He's going to besiege you anyway. Hmm... Well, not much we can do about that, unfortunately. I guess we'll just stay here. We'll get sieged either way, and there's nothing we can do. Anyway, uh, the Broken Axe are destroyed. We will move out. Carl will meet up with this army, and then we'll complete his retrofit, give him what he needs, including the artillery, though to be replaced by tanks later on, because I just really feel that the Emperor should have the Emperor's Wrath's tanks, and they can double up as cannons. Yeah, sure, they won't do as much damage as cannon fire will, and they won't uh, suppress, or they won't have that uh, monster impact speed reduction um, but it's still nice it's still nice oh and with the cannons monstrous impact they should go into the slow enemies down army as well really curious to see how that will work out but anyway anyway oh where are you going 
Are you going to Dieter's Heaven with a near full stack? Well, well, well. Uh, that is a shame in the sense that I did not see you doing this. And we can't chase you down with either of these armies. You are also not at war with Marienburg, and I'm willing to bet that they won't do it. For 21k. Well, maybe eventually if we have enough money we can do it, but by then Bellacor will probably be dead. Anyway, that will continue. Elspeth will complete whatever she needs to destroy uh, down near Scarby and trade the territories up before moving back to the Empire for her much-awaited Retrofits, we're probably going to get a two stack versus a Gotrick and Felix stack here, as well against Malice as the war against the Dark Elves to the north will begin. More else about to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially the threshold if you're into that sort of thing. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.